location for the metropolitan region. Lorna Virgili brings us details about shopping for health insurance coverage through the state's new insurance marketplace. Lorna? Sonia, after enrollment opens up on October 1st, there's going to be a six-month window and three ways to actually enroll. Now, county officials want to make sure that all uninsured residents do get as much information as possible about possible insurance coverage. The Affordable Care Act comes with a mandate, be insured or be fined. ACA kicks in early next year and uninsured legal residents must acquire medical health insurance. Our target population are the uninsured between 18 and 64. So if you currently have insurance um, via your employer or if you're Medicaid or uh, Medicare enrollee, you're covered. You're covered. So we're really targeting individuals who are between that age bracket who are currently uninsured. There will be three ways to enroll online by calling the state's call center or sitting down with a navigator at a community event or by appointment. The county will have about 80 navigators reaching out to eligible residents. Coverage is not free. The states offer insurance premiums through private health plans promised to be surprisingly affordable. The state recently released the, um, the premium report in regards to the information, information regarding the um, projected costs. So they're very competitive nationally. However, um, it really will depend on someone's um, family size and the kind of plan that one selects. So they're very competitive. I, I do recommend that everyone take a look at the report as well as the website to really take a look at what one may be eligible for. And I think everyone would be pleasantly surprised. However, if uninsured residents cannot afford the premiums, they may qualify for financial assistance or Medicaid through its expansion in Maryland. The application for financial assistance will be online October 1st. But all interested can start gathering information prior to open enrollment at the state's new insurance marketplace. Just visit MarylandHealthConnection.gov. Also, the county's health department will be holding two additional informational forums coming up in early September, one in Silver Spring and another one in Bethesda. In Silver Spring, for Con Report This Week, I'm Lorna Vercelli. Overall, statistics show Montgomery County ranks low when it comes to drug-related deaths. But a recent trend has law enforcement officials on high alert. Susan Kennedy has more. Sonia, Montgomery County Police are investigating this spike in heroin overdose deaths. They say this trend is alarming. There have been at least seven overdose deaths attributed to heroin in the county since March, and six of those have occurred since the beginning of June. For us, that's a lot, and I, I know that there's been some news on uh, radio stations regarding the increase nationally, and we're experiencing the same thing, and some people tend to think that our county is a little bit more affluent and, and educated, and you would have that problem. The seven deaths have occurred in different parts of the county, and the ages of the victims range from 19 to 45. Demi says more people have died from overdosing on heroin in the county in the last five months, as in all of 2010, 2011, and 2012. It's not unique to age, it's not unique to gender, it's not unique to lifestyle, you're not seeing it in just students, you're not seeing it in, in people who do certain type of work. It's across the board uh, equal opportunity drug. And Demi says the price of the drug makes it even more appealing. The average cost of a single dose of heroin is as little as $10. And it's much cheaper. It's only problem is, you know, it's, you have no idea what's in it. Like an FDA regulated prescriptive drug, you know sort of what you're putting in your body. You're just putting it with more frequency than you should. But with uh, heroin, you really don't know what it's cut with, how pure it is. You have no idea what you're putting into your body. We're starting to look closer at that, whereas before we, that wasn't something that we spent a lot of lab tech time and money on, and we are doing that now. Hereby commends the entire community partnership drug market initiative. Recently, the county council celebrated the success of the drug market initiative program in Damascus Gardens. The program is credited with eliminating the open air drug market there. Demi says these programs can help stop trends like this one from growing, and that's their goal. The, the problem is that if people who do prescription meds turn to this, we're afraid that this number is really going to exponentially go up. We're trying to do an educational message, not that a lot of the people that use it will necessarily listen to us, but maybe if one does, that's good. In Rockville, I'm Susan Kennedy for County Report This Week. 
Now we take a minute to congratulate County Executive Ike Leggett for his recent election to preside over the County Executives of America, a national organization that represents county executives across the nation. Leggett was elected to a one-year term, and he'll be at the helm of the organization that consists of over 700 county or city county governments in 45 states. The CEA organization represents the executive form of government before the U.S. Congress, the White House, and the departments of the federal government. To kick off Hispanic Heritage Month, Executive Ike Leggett will host the first annual Montgomery County Executive Hispanic Gala to take place on September 12th at the Fillmore in Silver Spring. Leading companies, organizations, and individuals are gathering to raise funds to financially assist Hispanic students enrolled in Maryland colleges and universities. This year's event, Latino Dreamers, is committed to assist Hispanic youth achieve a higher level of education, and 25 students will receive a $2,000 scholarship. For more information about the gala or to purchase tickets, visit MontgomeryHispanicGala.org. Local officials and the business community recently gathered at the Montgomery County Fairgrounds for the annual Gaithersburg Germantown Chamber of Commerce Public Safety Awards. These awards recognize the men and women who protect our county every day. The Gaithersburg Germantown Chamber of Commerce Public Safety Awards honor heroic deeds of police officers working in the 5th and 6th district stations, as well as Gaithersburg City Police and area firefighters. There are people in this room who are receiving awards that truly risk their lives and are receiving awards for it. And then there's people in this room who have risked their lives and didn't get to the award stage, but we know you do it every day, pretty, pretty much every second of every day, to keep all of us safe. One of the awards, the Citation for Bravery, went to Montgomery County Police Officer Gabriel Stone for arresting a drug dealer. The highest award, the Medal of Valor, was presented to these firefighters who were credited with saving the life of a two-year-old with severe burns. Montgomery County Fire Rescue would like to recognize Firefighter Berger, Carter, um, Galt, Noakes, and Captain Crittenden for the recognition of the Medal of Valor. The Citation of Bravery was awarded to these county and NIST firefighters who rescued a woman and a dog from a burning apartment building in Montgomery Village this summer. For the first time, the ceremony also recognized Safety Patrol students with Lifesaver Awards. A little girl had made like a little hat, like a little Indian hat with feathers and stuff, and it blew off in front of a car. And so she ran to get it, and a car, moving car was coming, so I grabbed her before she got hit. I jumped off the curb to grab her while she was trying to still get across the street, and I pulled her back onto the curb. The event also featured a congratulatory award to the Gaithersburg Police Department for 50 years of service, and several other officers received service citation awards. It was a privilege to be honored today, and, uh, but it was truthfully it was a teamwork effort, for sure. I know that the men and women of the Montgomery County Police Department are so appreciative of this recognition, so it's a pretty important day. We love this event. It's one of the best things that we do as a Chamber of Commerce is to recognize these folks. When we come back, we'll introduce you to some of the county's newest educators. And we'll tell you about a lunch and learn program in Tacoma Park. Stay with us. Are you sure they can recycle us, Clamshell? Hey, Dome, we're on a new recycling postcard. I can't wait to make a new start. Maybe I'll be a red carpet at a big premiere. And I'll get to paint the White House. Shh, here he comes. <laughs> Now you can recycle more plastics in Montgomery County, including number one PET plastics such as clamshells, deli containers, trays, lids, domes, and cups. We're in! For more information on recycling, contact the Montgomery County, Maryland Division of Solid Waste Services at 311. The wait is over. Recycle more plastics today. The first day of school is right around the corner, and we want to make sure every child is ready to learn on day one. That includes having a backpack and the supplies they need for the new school year. This summer, join Montgomery County Public Schools for the MCPS Give Backpacks campaign. A simple $10 donation will provide a student in need with a new backpack filled with school supplies. Please help our kids get off to a great start. Go to mcpsgivebackpacks.org to donate today. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. When school starts, there'll be some new faces around area schools, and we aren't just talking about new students. Montgomery County Public Schools recently welcomed the county's newest teachers and gave them a preview of what's ahead this school year. MCPS-TV has the story. 
Hundreds of new MCPS teachers attended the 2013 New Educator Orientation, or NEO, during the week of August 12th. Superintendent Joshua Starr kicked off the week-long orientation with some inspirational remarks for the new educators. He told them that in a short time, more than 150,000 students will arrive and... Each and every one of them deserves every single thing we have every day. That's why you're here. That's why you chose us. NEO, now in its 14th year, helps teachers get ready for the new school year and a new career with MCPS. It also helps them become familiar with resources and support systems that the district has in place for new teachers. For our novice teachers, it's really setting the stage for the beginning of the year, getting them ready um, and giving them the tools that they'll need to be successful um, as they start their career with MCPS. For our experienced or seasoned teachers, it's really acclimating them to the MCPS way and getting them familiarized with how we do things as opposed to other school systems. Teachers attend classes on a variety of topics including curriculum and classroom management and had an opportunity to interact with their new colleagues. I just moved here and I know it's one of the best districts around. It's big, um, there's opportunities to grow. It's really good to be here and meet some new people and get ready for the year. Monday, August 26th is the first day of school. A record number of students will fill the hallways and classrooms of the district's 202 school. I have a passion for the children, love the kids, love what they do, want to impart some knowledge on the students, want to see them grow in their life. To teacher and students alike, we wish you the very best for this new school year. The National Transportation Safety Board, along with the Montgomery County Fire and Rescue Department, recently held an educational campaign to promote car seat safety. The event was held at Fitzgerald Auto Mall, where officials talked about school bus safety, proper installation of car seats, and the use of seat belts. If you have a properly installed child safety seat, uh, it will reduce the chance of injury by about 71%. That is a huge safety step forward. But 75% of child safety seats are improperly installed. Joining us now in the studio is Lucille Bauer from the Montgomery County Police Department with some important tips for keeping our kids safe before and after school. Lucille? Absolutely. This is a time when you're talking with your kids about a lot of things, preparing them for a new grade, new teacher, perhaps new friends. But while you're talking about all those things, make sure you take some time to talk about the safety tips that are necessary. There are different safety tips if your child is walking to school, using a bus, riding a bicycle. So go over some of those best practices as, as simple as when you're crossing the street, looking left, right, and left again before you cross the street. When you're on the bus, being careful, listening to the bus driver, not engaging in, in roughhousing or activity that can get that driver off track as they're taking precious cargo to school. Riding bicycles, make sure they know the rules of the road and, and best practices for when to ride in the roadway, when you can ride on the sidewalk. Many times children are going to be left at home after school, so vitally important to go over those safety tips of how to call, when to call 911. Make sure they have your phone number to call at work. Make sure they know another relative's number to call if you're in a meeting and not available. Make sure they know their neighbors, have somewhere that they can go if they're concerned about their personal safety. Starting a new school year is an exciting time. Kids typically have some nervousness. You can help put that in check by going over a lot of safe practices with them. Thank you, Lucille. Earlier this summer, Tacoma Park residents hosted their first annual reading program. It's a start to a supplemental curriculum the community hopes can help their kids thrive academically all year long. My MC Media's Tamika Smith reports. The achievement gap for minorities in Montgomery County is slowly improving, and an annual summer program aims to help students make even greater strides. The Lunch and Learn program, launched at the Essex House in Tacoma Park, provides lunch and a reading break for elementary school students. Jacquette Frazier creates the curriculum and works with students who need the extra attention. Um, I zero in on kids who have problems with reading, and I've put 
a, a person to zoom in on what their needs are. Tacoma Park Council member Jared Smith created the program and partnered up with local nonprofits. Montgomery County Public Schools provided the lunches. We have an achievement gap in Montgomery County schools with minority kids. So I thought it was important to add a learning component. So the kids here learn to, they're able to read, uh, do artwork, and have special guests. A study released by MCPS finds that the achievement gap in Montgomery County is slowly improving. However, at the current rate, it would take about 25 years to close the gap between black, Latino, and white students. Shawanda Oliver says the community well, has to have, step in. We have a lot of diversity in our building, and we have a lot of kids here, and we wanted to do something to get involved with the children. Um, we wanted to do computer lab. Um, we wanted to do after-school programs for the kids. I think that's something very good, something we should encourage to keep doing for the kids. It keeps them busy, um, you know, helping them to keep up reading. To learn more about creating a Lunch and Learn program in your community, go to Educare's website. For a County Report this week, I'm Tamika Smith. Still to come on County Report this week, we'll tell you about Montgomery College's study abroad program. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? But there's only one number you need to remember for non-emergency calls, 311. MC311 is Montgomery County government's online telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. If it wasn't for his doctor, he wouldn't be here. If it weren't for Montgomery County Fire and Rescue, he wouldn't be here. If it wasn't for the phone call, we wouldn't have been there. If I didn't call, I don't know where we would be. Montgomery County emergency responders are there when you need help at no cost to you. In an emergency, don't ever hesitate to call 911. If you live in Montgomery County, you will never get a bill or pay a dime. So if you have an emergency, call us. We're, We're there, there for you. you. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. A group of Montgomery College students and faculty recently traveled to Europe as part of the short-term study abroad program. And one of the trip's highlights was a service learning project that not only turned into an article published in a German newspaper, but helped foster positive relations between the two countries. Danielle Stetsky has more. Dallas Howard is a student aide at Montgomery College Television. She wants to make movies and travel overseas. During this summer, one of her dreams came true. She was accepted into the college's short-term study abroad program to travel to Germany, Luxembourg, and Belgium. It meant a lot to me to get accepted into the study abroad program. It gave me more of a self-confidence that I was able to apply for something and get accepted for something that I would love to do that would help push me further in life. The program was led by MC professor Dr. Gregory Malvo and included other faculties such as Professor Joan Frazier. The nine-day program focused primarily on business and economics, looking at different German engineering and manufacturing. However, one of the highlights of the program was the service learning project done in Stuttgart, where the group helped build a horse riding arena for children with disabilities. The hard work of the group even caught the attention of a local newspaper that sent a reporter to write an article about the work that was being done at the farm. According to Dr. Malvo, two questions intrigued the Germans. Why are you here and why are you doing that? I would explain that, well, we you know, want to give back to our host, we want to give back to this country that 
uh, and the people and do something that is going to assist, you know, in terms of those who need uh, assistance or could use our assistance. Dr. Malvo explains that he sees the service learning project as an opportunity to assist whatever culture or group that they come across and to help change some of the negative ideas about Americans. I think we, we did assist in terms of them understanding better the American, the American student, Montgomery College, uh, and knowing that, you know, we, we're all people. As for Dallas, she was thrilled about the study abroad program. She enjoyed her experience abroad so much that she wants to return to Germany and perhaps even finish her four-year degree at a German university. Two words sum up her feelings about this very special experience. Danke schön. Means thank you. For County Report this week, in Brockville, I'm Daniel Wisteski. This summer, a group of students known as Innovation Fellows have been scouting sites in Montgomery County that may be ideal future locations for area food trucks to set up shop. Joining us in the studio today to talk about this project is Dan Hoffman, who's the county's chief innovation officer. Dan, what can you tell us about these projects and when will these future sites become public? Thanks, Sonia. We've had uh, a group of five uh, fellows, innovation fellows, as you mentioned. Uh, three of them are Wheaton High School students. Uh, two of them are uh, working here in the office of the county executive looking for food truck friendly sites, sites where food trucks won't run into problems with enforcement, uh, whether they're not blocking fire lanes or uh, blocking pedestrian right-of-way, uh, places where they won't run into problems with brick-and-mortar businesses. Uh, we don't want the burrito truck opening up in front of the burrito restaurant, obviously, uh, and most importantly, places where they can be successful. So these fellows have been uh, working their way around the county looking for places that fit those criteria, uh, and we're pretty close. We've got a draft list that we're starting to vet with the appropriate agencies and uh, we hope to have those sites available for feedback uh, sometime in the next month. So can you give us an idea of where they're looking in the county? We're looking uh, really all over the county. So we've got a few places in Bethesda, a few places in Silver Spring, Wheaton, White Flint, Twinbrook, uh, Shady Grove, even as far north as, uh, as Germantown. Uh, but we expect this list to evolve over time. Some sites that aren't as popular might drop off. Some sites that um, we identify that would work well, might be added to it. The hope is to publish this list on Data Montgomery, our open data site, so that uh, it's accessible to everybody. Excellent. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Coming up on County Report this week, we'll introduce you to some local high school students who spent a portion of their summer learning to produce and direct a music video. Register now for fall semester classes at Montgomery College. There are plenty of classes to choose from. Register in person at any of our three campuses or online anytime, 24 hours a day. A grant from Wells Fargo will support MC's new entrepreneurship program for military vets. The grant makes it possible for 20 vets to develop their ideas for new businesses in the Kaufman Fast Track New Venture for Veteran Entrepreneur Program offered by MC's Workforce Development and Continuing Education Department. Sign up for Montgomery College Alert today. Receive college closing, delay, and emergency information via text message and email. The service also sends important information about Montgomery County weather and traffic events. Welcome back to County Report This Week. I'm Sonia Burke. What did you do this summer? Well, you're about to meet some local high school students who can say that they produced a music video right here in Montgomery County. That's Brendan Warner behind the mic. He and several other teens spent two weeks of their summer at a music video camp put on by Montgomery Community Media and Docs in Progress. MCM trainer Ellen Donnelly founded the program. My vision for this camp was to give high school students an opportunity to be as creative as they could with a song or a video that they love. Here at Docs in Progress, we do a lot of documentary video production classes throughout the year, mostly with adults. So this is really a treat for us to work with kids. In addition to appearing on camera, 
The students were divided into teams, and each student was assigned a production role. I've been planning out the shots, just picturing it in my head and trying to write it down, get it across to my other teammates. I'm the center photographer, or cameraman, video man. I'm the guy behind the camera, getting the shots, making sure everything looks good. Make sure that like the location where I have to like put down where the location is. I have to put down the time to like make sure that we stay on track. Basically, I just do all the writing. I am the director of the entire video, so that's a really big job in the whole thing. So it was a really good experience. <laughs> also helping the teens with their music videos, some serious film school students. Yeah, having a job um, in the industry in some capacity was uh, is uh, kind of what I'm in the next couple of years down the line directing, writing Steven Spielberg, you know. But. I think this is just a great opportunity for kids um, to have a chance to learn about TV production early. Well, I mean, I would do it over and over again if I could. This is the star of our music video. His name is Max. You can watch the teens' music videos and see more of Max on the MyMC Media website. Take a look and let us know what you think. The City of Rockville's Teen Programs Division offers programs that help keep the city's youth and teens staying active throughout the year. This summer, the division hosted an event that rocked the city skate park. Rockville 11's Jennifer Lixay has more. Local skaters have brought out their boards to Rockville Skate Park for some friendly competition at today's event, Rockville Skate Jam. Rockville Skate Jam gave skaters of all skill levels the chance to show off their best tricks. Hill flip off a bank, um, ollie over bank, pop over, and all that other stuff. I did a front side 180, which is when you do a 180, except you turn towards your heel. And it's just really fun skating here. Just I did a manual, which is when you, it's a wheelie, except on a skateboard. And the Rockville Skate Park, located in Welsh Park behind the Swim and Fitness Center, offers a number of ramps, pipes, and walls for the skate jam competitors to use to impress the judges. As far as the street course, we have um, the quarter pipes right over there, and um, the bank. We have the uh, the hubble ledge. We also have the box, the rail, the pyramid hip, the quarter pipe. That's a six foot quarter pipe along with the bank. We've got the jersey wall, the ball ride spine another box right there is a hump here we got the stairs that's a five well this is a five that's a three and then we got the uh the euro gap we're looking for consistency um along with the difficulty of tricks that they're doing and the amount of heart they put into it we just want to see people having fun you know doing their best it's not too too competition oriented we're more just getting everybody to feed off each other get the good vibes going While beginner, intermediate, and advanced skaters took the floor, the Rockville Skate Jam was complete with food and a DJ spinning music to keep the crowd entertained. The event was hosted by the city's Department of Recreation and Parks Teen Programs Division. Uh, I think it's good. To, I think it's a good event for the kids. Um, good thing for them to do, you know, on a daily basis. It's really good, and all of them are killing it. They're doing really, really good. It's it's awesome that they like could do this for us, like. Skateboarders don't get much love compared to like football players and soccer and stuff, but yeah, it's cool that they would do it. We got an outdoor park. The community should be behind this, supporting this 100% because we want our kids here. We don't want them in the streets. We don't want them sitting at home playing video games. We want them to do something active that encourages them to make friends and to, to build good social characteristics. That's what this contest is really about. We're trying to build everybody up socially. To learn more about the Rockville Skate Park, visit rockvillemd.gov slash skatepark. For County Report This Week, I'm Jennifer Ligsay. Well, that does it for this edition of County Report This Week. Remember, we want to hear from you, and we invite you to join the opinion forum at engage.montgomerymd.gov. We'd also like you to like us on Facebook. Join us again at this time every week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. I'm Sonia Burke. Thank you for watching.